Hi, so a lot of you have been asking how my graduate school journey began. So in this video, I'm going to tell you how I got admission to all the schools I applied to, including Johns Hopkins University, Harvard University, Yale University, Columbia University, Emory University, George Washington University, and Tulane University. So stay tuned and you'll learn a lot from there. Let's go. Hi, my name is Dr. Madda Khalifa. If you're new to this channel, I am a PhD student at the number one school of public health, the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. I was also a recipient of the prestigious MPH and MBA SOMA Scholars Scholarship here at the Bloomberg School. This channel will help talk about strategies that will help you break through your academic and personal developmental barriers. I've helped several students get admission to some of the best schools in the world. So kindly subscribe, like, and share so that others will benefit. Let's dive in. So where did my interest in graduate school start? So back in 2017, after um, I had practiced in the clinical field for a couple of years, I decided that clinical practice alone was not sufficient to overcome some of the complex um, issues we have as a continent. So I started with doing my own research, um, use Google, to look at schools that offer uh, programs in public health and business administration. Um, I looked into Canada, I looked into UK, and I looked into the United States. And um, most of the programs in the US were quite powerful. So I, I narrowed down to the US, and more so because I had a couple of colleagues who had gone through the US system. So it was easy to start from there. So I reached out to them and they gave me all the information that uh, they had, all the guidance that they had. So that really helped me uh, put together my application. So, the first, so step number two is to gather your application materials. And I knew that if you really wanted to make a very strong case and get into a very strong program, you have to take every component of the application very seriously. So you can think of the application package as being both a quantitative element and a qualitative element. So the quantitative element is your GPA, your undergraduate GPA, your GRE scores, and then any other test score that it is required by the program. Your qualitative element is your statement of purpose, your recommendation letters, your CV, and then any other essays that you have to write. So I had to put together these elements in order to make a very strong case for graduate school. Let's talk about my GRE preparation. Back in the day, GRE was really required by every single school. So I had no option than to take the GRE. I remember at that time, I was in Mali on a peacekeeping mission with the United Nations. And I had very little time to prepare, but I made sure that I put in the effort and within five weeks, I sat for the exam and then I passed. However, if you, if you are very familiar with the GRE, the scores are ranked in percentiles. And after I got my score, I was, I was really devastated because I knew that was not the best. And if I looked at other programs' websites, they would tell you the average GRE score or the average GRE percentile they have met. It's maybe in the 70th percentile or in the 80th percentile. And mine was way lower, in the 50th percentile. So I was like, no, I can't. But I made sure that the other elements of my application were strong enough. So another key step of my graduate school journey 
was to undergo what we call the credential evaluation. So if you're an international student and you are thinking of uh, applying to schools in the US, one of the essential steps you would have to take is undergoing the credential evaluation so that your transcripts and um, your diplomas would be standardized against the US system. So once this is done, the schools will have an idea about your GPA. So that step usually takes time and you need to start very early in your application process. One of the other important things that I had to do was to develop or come up with a statement of purpose. And at that time, I didn't really know what statement of purpose was, but I talked to a lot of people, got a lot of perspectives and they, they gave me the guidance to come up with such a strong statement of purpose. So I spent more time developing my statement of purpose than I spent actually preparing for the GRE. And I had several versions of my statement of purpose. I had a lot of people with different backgrounds reviewing my statement of purpose. And at the end, I believe my statement of purpose was really in the best shape that I could actually get it to be. Knowing that my GRE was just average and my GPA was not 4.0, I needed to come up with a very strong recommendation letter. So my search for recommendation uh, letters was very meticulous. I spoke to several professors or several lecturers. Most of them, luckily, were very willing to offer me recommendation letters. And I mean, looking back, I, I see how my recommendation was one of the key uh, parameters that got me into all the schools because my, recommend, my recommenders were one of the best in their respective fields. So, admission reaction. When I got my first offer from George Washington University, I was so excited because I didn't even imagine that I was going to get admission to any of these schools. So when I got the offer from George Washington, it was like one of the best days in my life. And the weeks that followed were even more exciting. I received notifications from Columbia offering me admission, from Emory University offering me admission, from Yale offering me admission, from Johns Hopkins offering me admission. If you're a medical student from Ghana or any African university, Johns Hopkins University is like all you hear about so when i got an offer from them it was one of the best moments in my life the following day i received an email that there's been an update on my application on my harvard application so i opened the link went to my personal um, uh, portfolio then click on the update and then saw that i've been offered admission this was really, really incredible. And I know people ask me why I chose Hopkins and not Harvard. I'm actually planning doing another video on why I chose Hopkins and not Harvard. So if you want to hear that perspective or my reasoning behind it, leave a comment and I'll come up with that video. If you are looking to take a similar path, you have to know what is required. You have to know whether GRE is required or not. You have to come up with a very strong CV. You have to um, make sure you solicit for recommendation letters, very strong recommendation letters. You have to spend a lot of time tweaking your statement of purpose. And don't forget to do your worst evaluation. If you enjoy this video, kindly subscribe like and share so that others will benefit thank you so much see you in the next one